Hello everyone. Thanks for stopping by again. Uh, a couple of months ago, um, I became aware of um, some mini PC computer, which smallest thing, supposedly this thing, this is the Chewy Lockbox. Um, this thing was advertised as being, uh, comes with Windows 11, and I will show you the listing here in just a second. There we go. There's our listing for this. Lockbox, Mini Pro, so forth and so on. Somebody says Windows 11 desktop. And um, yeah, it comes with Windows 11. But this, in my opinion, is... I'm not sure if I should use the term false advertising or deceptive advertising. I'm going to go with deceptive ad advertising. And here's why. Um, the... Uh, Processor that's in here, this Intel Intel Celeron J4125, um, doesn't have TPM. Well, the unit itself doesn't have any TPM in it whatsoever. Um, and But you'll see that it says that it's a Windows 11 desktop. And then further down here, it says it runs Windows 11. And that's completely correct. It does come with Windows 11. It does run Windows 11. But there's no TPM on this. If you were to wipe this thing out, and reinstall from scratch, Windows 11 will essentially refuse to install because it doesn't, it can't find a TPM. Uh, in the description down here, if you look very, very carefully, it says right here, and I'm going to highlight this for you, pre-installed Windows 10 Home. Okay. So that's really what this is. This is a Windows 10 machine that Chewy basically forced Windows 11 onto. And uh, they've done this on a couple of their units. Um, they're selling a um, this guy right here. This Intel i5 here, mini PC. Uh, this one they sell with Windows 10. This one's fine. But they have a couple of other ones that they've put Windows 11 on things that don't really support Windows 11. Um, but in any case, that's what's going on here. So what I'm going to do here is because of this, um, I've decided to take one of these things and see if we can make it useful. And how we're going to do that is I'm going to take this and I'm going to put Linux on it. And I'm going to install uh, something called Kodi on this thing. And... Uh, we're going to turn this into probably one of the smallest home theater PCs that you've you've ever seen. <laughs> that's that's the plan anyway. Um, so uh, come on along with me, and we're going to have a little fun with this guy. And I'm going to show you at least you can if you actually bought one of these, and you have realized that um, you've kind of been like hoodwinked or whatever you want to call it. Um, um, or you're kind of like, well, wait a minute, I bought this, it's supposed to do a Windows 11 and so forth and so on. As long as you don't have to reinstall the operating system, you can run Windows 11 on this. That's They forced it on here and, and it will run. The issue is going to be down the line when we get to about uh, 2025, uh, when Windows 10 is no longer um, um, serviceable or up or has any patches or anything for it i got a sneaky suspicion that you're going to find that windows 11 updates for this are going to suddenly stop and then you're going to be basically screwed but uh, like i said we're going to turn this into a linux based uh home theater pc so come along with me and we'll uh, hopefully be able to get this done and and you'll see at least the application that i'm going to use this for uh, may or may not be the application you want to use it for. That's fine. Um, there is, in the bottom here, if you remove this bottom cover, there is a slot here for an M.2 um, drive. Uh, the caveat is, is that it is the 2242 factor, form factor. Um, and uh, the largest I've been able to find uh, for capacity one of those is only two terabytes. So... If you've got a rather big video collection or whatever, uh, you're going to run out of space real quick here. But anyway, let's go on and let's go through the process and I'll show you uh, how we do this. All right, so let's, um, let's get started. 
uh, first thing I want to do is I want to plug in the Linux Mint uh, thumb drive. Then at this point, what I want to do is I want to get into the BIOS and see if there's a boot override. We don't need to be seeing that at the moment. Um, and I think there is one, um, but we have to get into the BIOS to do it. There doesn't appear to be, at least as far as I could find, uh, any kind of a um, F, uh, F key or whatever that would seem to allow me to bring up a, a boot screen. So let's go ahead and do a restart and see if I can get into the BIOS real quick. And from there, hopefully we have a, a boot override, which I believe we do. Okay, so we're into the BIOS. It was fairly easy. And let's go take a look and see. Uh, it's probably not in here, but I'll look anyway. No, doesn't appear to be. Let's go to, here we go. There's a boot option there. Uh, but that only allows us to change it, so that's not what I'm looking for. Hmm, all right, let's go over here. Ah, here we go. For some reason, it's in the save and exit section of the BIOS. So we're going to go over here, and hopefully that will allow us to override. Yes, it does. And we will go ahead and install Linux Mint. Okay, so we're at the uh, live desktop. This is all running off of a thumb drive, so we're going to go ahead and install from here. Okay, this is going to be a very straightforward process for the most part. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hit continue because it does show us English. English US keyboard, that's correct. Uh, it says here that we have the option to connect to a Wi-Fi network if we want to. At this point right now, I'm not going to. I just want to do the base install. We can get all the updates here in a little while. Okay, so we're going to install a multimedia codex. Uh, I don't think I want to configure secure boot at this point. I think I'm going to leave that alone. And we're going to hit continue. Now it says here to install along Windows. I'm not going to do that. I'm actually just going to erase the disk. And let it take the entire thing. Right, the changes to the disk, continue. Time zone is correct, as I am on the East Coast. Okay, now we're just going to do very simple. We're going to choose a password. At this point, it really doesn't matter what it is. We're going to log in automatically because I just want this to go right in to the desktop. And there's a reason why I want to do that, which we'll get to as we get further along in the uh, in the install and setup. So we'll let the install do its thing, and I will see you all on the other side. Okay, so there we go. We're all squared away. System is in. And I'm going to just restart it, and we're going to boot up Linux Mint 21.2 and go from there. Okay, so we are here. We're at the desktop. Now, first thing we want to do is we do want to connect to Wi-Fi at this point. And we can close this. We don't need to see that. Let's go over here and connect to Wi-Fi. And I will put in the appropriate S key. And we have Wi-Fi. <laughs> so, first thing we notice, obviously, is we have to go into the Update Manager. We want to do this right away. We want to make sure that the system is updated as quickly as possible. All right, so here are the immediate updates that we probably need to take care of. So we're going to go ahead and do them. 
uh, it wants to see if we want to do a local meter uh, mirror. So let's go ahead in here. And what this will do is instead of going all the way, who knows where, uh, where the main depository is, there are mirrors uh, in the various countries that are usually a bit easier and uh, quicker to deal with. And it will give you a list of those mirrors and what the appropriate sp or the approximate speed is from those. And generally, you want to pick the fastest connection uh, that's available. So it looks like probably this very top one here, and they are listed according to speed. So we're going to select this one up here and actually just change. We're going to select that one and hit apply. We're going to go into this one up here and we're going to double check, make sure that we're hooked up to the fastest thing we can find. So this may actually not change anything. Hit apply, hit OK. It's going to update the cache and this will, and the update manager will repopulate itself once it's done. So we're going to let it do its thing. It wants to have the password to make sure that we know that we're actually doing this and not some little bug in the system. So we'll let this go through the update process and I will see you on the other side of this. And we have a new version of the update manager, so we're going to apply that now. And we have a few more updates to take care of. <laughs> so let's go ahead and do those. If you thought that uh, Windows updates were a pain in the butt, uh, Linux can be a pain in the butt at times. So, But generally speaking, most of the updates don't require rebooting the machine. Uh, in, in Linux, usually, unless you're updating the kernel, you don't have to restart the machine for the changes to take effect. Most of the time. Okay, so we're all up to date. Reboot required because we installed an updated kernel. So I'm going to go ahead and do and do that right now. All right. So for our next step here uh, to turn this into an HTPC, we have to go to Software Manager. Okay, so the software package we want to install is something called Kodi. And here's the one we're going to choose right here. It should be the most current version, I believe. And we're going to install this. It's going to tell us that it needs some additional software to be installed with it. That's fine. Simply hit continue. And it will go through the install process. Okay. Now that we've got this installed, we're going to launch this right now. And it defaults to this section here. Uh, for the purposes of this, since this chewy piece really doesn't have any storage to speak of, uh, what I'm going to wind up doing here is I'm going to wind up um, putting in um, some uh, links to my NAS, which does have a number of movies stored on it. So let's uh, delve into that one right now. I'm going to go into here. We're going to go into files. We're going to add videos. And we're going to have to add a source. And we're going to browse for that source, actually. We're going to add a network location, which is here. 
it's going to be the Windows network. And the server name here, all I have to do is put in the IP address, which I already know. Yours will probably be different. And then at this point, I believe we have to browse through that location. Actually, we just have to hit OK. OK, and then we can come down to this source here. We can go into here. And we can select this source here. And I believe all we have to do is hit OK at this point. It defaults to movies, which is fine. I'm going to hit OK. And it asks us what this actually contains. And we can go into here, and we can actually go to movies. Once we do that, it has a provider that it looks for online to get all the information for those movies, which that one is perfectly fine. And we're just going to hit OK. And we want to refresh, yes. And you'll notice at the top here, it's scanning movies using movie database, etc., etc., etc. So it will do that for us. And if we go back to the main screen by hitting escape, it should give us, if we go down into videos and we go into movies, it's probably going to start work. It should start working on this relatively quickly. It will do, well, here it goes. So here's our movies. It's starting to add all of the stuff in it. It will take a while to do this, but uh, you, the list of movies will show up here eventually. It will take some time for that to do it. So in the meantime, we're going to go back in to videos, and we're going to go back to files, and we're going to add video, and we're going to... Browse our source. We're going to go back to the NAS. We're going to go back into here, and I have a section of TV stuff, which we're going to hit that and go OK. And it says the name, which is TV, which is fine. And it asks us what this contains and the TV shows. And we hit that. And then it's going to go and look for the sources here too and just hit okay we want to refresh yes and it will take some time to go through all of these things but eventually at some point when we get here to tv shows it will give us all it'll, it'll populate very much like this is so that will take some time so i'm just going to let it do its thing and eventually it will it will populate it's going again it'll take a while for this to happen okay so after a considerable amount of time as you will note here we have all of our movie stuff here we go over to the tv shows here we go here's all the tv shows so forth that we can peruse and whatnot so continuing on we can also add music same thing same process. We go look under files. We're going to add music. We're going to browse. And we go into here and back into here. Here's our music stuff right here. And hit OK. Again, defaults to music. And hit that. And yes, again, do we want to add? Media from the source to the library, yes. And it's going to go through and check those files as well. And it will give us all of the stuff that we want there too as well. All right, so um, now that you uh, we've gotten all this stuff done, you can see that we got our movies, we got our TV shows, and there's our music stuff. So everything is here. Uh, for the most part, I've skipped over a lot of things that Cody can do. Um, 
just because I'm not terribly familiar with it. Uh, I just wanted to show you some of the basics of it. You do have the option in here um, for uh, live TV. You have to add in what they call a PBR client. Same thing with radio. You can listen to internet radio stations, so forth and so on. But I haven't explored these yet, and uh, I'm not familiar with them. So I'm going to leave it at this point here, and then I'm going to sum up uh, what the deal is, okay? All right, one last thing that I did want to mention um, that we should cover real quickly. Um, the reason that I originally set this up to um, bypass a login screen was very simple. Uh, what we want to do here is we want to go into Startup Applications right here. And what we want to do is we want this machine, when you turn it on, to go into Kodi automatically. So these are all the, app the applications that are already starting up when the system comes up. We're going to add an application right here. I'm going to scroll down till we find Cody, which is right there. We're going to add that application so that it's that's right there. Close this. And now this should, when I reboot the system, go straight into Cody from restart. So let's give that a shot. Okay, so it does do exactly what we want it to do. It will come into Cody the minute we start it up. And that's what I kind of want to be the default behavior. All right, um, I've got some final thoughts on this whole thing with the, with the Chewy box, and um, we'll get to that in just a minute. Okay, so that's my little adventure with the Chewy lock box. A um, couple of last things I want to talk about. Um, as I said, the bottom of this, you can put in an SSD uh, 2242 form factor. Um, but the other caveat about this is, is that that slot that's in here is SATA. It's not NVMe. Okay, that's number one. May not mean a lot to you or anybody else, but that kind of bothers me a little bit. Um, the other thing is uh, I want to make a correction of what I said earlier at the beginning of this video. I was able to find um, some SATA M.2 2242 form factor or terabyte drive. So I was able to find that. So I will, I will correct myself on that. But here's the problem with that. <laughs> uh, let me show you this. I did find a couple of them. I've never really heard of shark speed, dogfish, I've sort of heard of. But look at the prices on this. 4 terabyte, 280, 270, which is just, I, I have a real problem with that. And then here's the reason why. Here's a team group. DRAM, SLC cache, actual NVMe drive. Yes, it's Gen 3. But the price, which is right here, is $100 less. Actually, a little bit. It's $110 less for the same capacity. And, and it's, it's just, there's really no comparison here. Um, it, to me, that's that's ridiculous. They're, they're, they're banging you for the fact that you've got to you know, have the 2242 form factor in it. So that, to me, is just, that's no good. So, anyway... Um, as I said, uh, I had a problem with this because of the what I refer to as the deceptive advertising. But I think I've managed to turn this somewhat of a lemon into lemonade. Um, I've got another one of these, um, not the Chewy, but I have another mini PC. Uh, along with this one, I want to give a shout out. Uh, Kerry Holzman sent me the Chewy and sent me something from BMAX. Both have the same problem. Uh, they are not actually windows 11 compatible uh the bmax it's different different uh way that it's not compatible and i will be having an upcoming video that will explore that i'm also going to take that one and i'm going to do the same thing we're going to turn it into a home theater pc but with a twist the bmax does have an nvme slot in it for additional storage 
And what I'm going to do with that one is, is I'm going to kind of turn it into a, I guess the terminology I would call it is a portable home theater PC. I mean, this is portable to a certain extent. Um, I can take this box to any TV in my house, plug it in, as long as I got a wireless connection and I'm connected to my, my NAS, I can watch movies and TV shows and do music stuff from anywhere in the house. Um, but it's restricted to the house, at least in its present form. With the BMAX, we're going to do something a little different. The BMAX, I'm going to put additional storage into it. Uh, I'm going to show you very briefly how to rip DVDs, uh, put them on there, and then you have your completely self-contained um, home theater PC, which you can literally take anywhere because all the stuff, all your movies, all your music, all whatever, as long as it fits on a four terabyte drive, I guess, um, will fit and you can take it anywhere. So uh, shout out to Carrie Holzman for sending me both the Chewy and the BMAX. Uh, another shout out also to Tony Wallow, because without him, a lot of the stuff that I'm doing here just would not be possible. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I hope it was educational for you. And um, I guess I'll see you at some point down the line. I'm not sure how long the BMAX one's going to take to put together. This one took a lot longer than I was suspected, mostly because I was unfamiliar with Cody. And I'm still somewhat unfamiliar with Cody, but um, hopefully I will have... Uh, the BMAX uh, video up faster than I'm having this one up. Anyway, I uh, appreciate you stopping by, and uh, hopefully I'll see you down the road. Have a good day.